So, Nisha, how intimate and in-depth is your knowledge of the rap world? Not very. <laughs> Gonna be a good video then. During a 2013 interview with GQ magazine, singer and rapper Drake explained to the interviewer that the biggest misconception about him that people have is that he's an asshole. A claim it's kind of hard to take seriously when you consider the fact that Drake once sent one of his security guards to harass and threaten a random tattooist. Okay, so what are the origins of this rap beef? This legendary R&B rapping beef. Well, the origins stem back to 2011, um, a time period you'll notice is before Drake made his I am not an asshole statement, when a female fan of Drake's swaggered into a tattoo shop owned and run by one Kevin Campbell and asked for a tattoo of, and I am not making this up, Drake's name across her forehead. So I'm probably not the best authority on this channel to talk about bad tattoos, you know, I've got a green screen one. Which was on purpose, I should point out, because I just found it really funny when it interacted with videos. Yes, I'm that petty, but what do you think about this story? And is there anything that you love enough to have permanently tattooed on your own forehead? Well, no, because I'm not a big fan of face tattoos anyway. I, just, <laughs> I don't think I'd, many people are. On, you know, other parts of the body, I think it's fine. You know, I don't mind that, it's just the face. It's, it's one of those things where, like, it's a bold statement and there are a few people out there who can pull it off. Um, this lady, I don't think she could. So she points out that the tattoo shop Campbell worked at uh, was right in the middle of Crip territory, which is important because um, after Campbell posted the photo on Instagram, it kind of went a bit viral and came to the attention of a lot of Drake fans because he was making fun of it because he found it so stupid. And Vice, being Vice, went and tracked him down to talk about it. And according to Campbell, like, he gets a lot of requests for tattoos like that and people were criticizing him for giving the girl such a stupid, life-ruining tattoo, to which he clarified, look, I asked her three times, is this what you want? I made her sign something, as I do with all my customers, and she left the shop happy. I gave her exactly what she wanted. And during this interview, he dropped like a subtle, but nonetheless quite harsh diss on Drake when he says, oh, look, my tattoo shop is right in the middle of like, you know, gang territory. I get a lot of requests for shitty tattoos. My one problem with this tattoo is that I thought Drake was a gang thing. And it turns out it was, and I quote, some goof nugget R&B dude. It's such a great insult as well. I was, I'm going to use it from now on. It's, it's a quality diss, and it's one that is very difficult to get annoyed at because it's not that harsh. Yeah. So he's not swearing, he's not like making any like specific jab at Drake, his appearance or his talent. He's just saying like, I think he's kind of goofy which is a fair like, comment about Drake, because you know, he got his show on like, Degrassi, I think it was, where he just plays like some guy in a wheelchair, and he's just like some nerdy dude. You can't keep her hands off. Spare me the gory deeds, I beg you. And I think it's a fair point about Drake that that clashes with like, you know, the tough rapper man image he's trying to go for now, where he's like posing for album covers, and like lean, like, I think the one that always cracks me up is the one of him leaning on a wall with this giant big like shearling coat on like trying to be a badass because that's the one that they always put on spotify i'm gonna fucking call that spotify this i love spotify people can probably guess from like you know just my haircut i suppose that i'm not big into rap I i'm kind of like you know more like rock and metal like you know dragon force all day let's go and that's all i listen to on spotify and then drake's album i think it was scorpion came out and Spotify pushed that shit on me every single day. It's like, oh, hello there, Carl. Person who spent the last three months listening to nothing but metal video game covers at the gym. Would you like to listen to rap caviar? No, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, Fuck used, off, Drake. You use the word caviar as it's well. It's called rap caviar, yes. And that pissed, and I, that's why I remember it, because I remember it called rap caviar, as if like, this is the creme de la creme of rap, and it's just Drake. No. Like, I don't know much about rap, but I know Drake sucks. I know that much at least, because I know that everyone makes fun of Drake for just being a huge fucking puss nugget. It's ridiculous. Puss nugget. I'm trying to like, you know, expand upon the goof nugget insults. I kind of like it. Well, I'm assuming it must have come to the attention of Drake. Yeah, of course it did, because he got tagged in a photo people sent him on social media. And uh, he was asked about it just straight up in an interview, um, during which Drake was very unkind to Campbell. I should point out Campbell wasn't like, you know, a famous tattooist, like, you know, coming out of like, you know, a really big shop that like celebrities go to. He just some random guy working in a shop, doing his best, giving people what they wanted, which apparently included just 
the word Drake on their fucking forehead. And he said, and I quote, if I ever meet Campbell in real life, I will fuck him up. This statement must have um, scared Campbell, you know, hearing that this multi-millionaire rap star. <laughs> I like how you said rap in just quotation <laughs> marks there. Rap star is threatening to beat him up. And to Campbell's credit, he laughed the whole thing off when he was reached out to for comments about Drake's threat to fuck him up if they ever met. He went, I don't care. I don't give a shit. And when they asked him, what about the harassment from Drake fans? He again said, I don't care. As we mentioned earlier, his tattoo shot was right in the middle of Crip territory. So it's yeah. not like the guy wasn't used to threats. So yeah, a pretty solid dude all round. And um, you'd think this would be the end of the story, but it wasn't because Drake actually did follow through on his threat. And what Drake did is he got a plane to Los Angeles, got into his car and made a beeline for Campbell's shop. And you're probably thinking, what happened next, Carl? Well, if you paid attention to the introduction, you'll know, and that is that Drake Rather than go in and confront Campbell on his own, he sent his biggest security guard in to do it instead while he sat in his car on his phone. Think about that for a moment. Like, think about how just one petty and two yeah. pathetic that is. One absolute dick nugget. <laughs> Expand upon the insult. Thanks, Campbell, for giving us a new motto for the channel. As you can probably tell from my porcelain complexion, I don't know much about the rap game or world, but one thing I do know is rep is a big part of it. And when you've got a guy out there blocking your shine, trying to like, you know, putting dirt on your name, and you say you're gonna square up, you better square the fuck up. And the idea that Drake made this threat publicly, when went like to the guy's place of work and sent his security guard <laughs> in to confront him, instead of doing it himself, like he said he would, I, I, it completely destroys any credibility he had of like, you know, being a tough guy. Yeah. Just, and it's just so funny to imagine him sat in his car on his phone going, that showed him. Just on Twitter, like, yeah, I'm just currently beating this guy up. I, I, I can't remember. I think he did tweet about it. I made a statement about it. Somewhere. I went, oh, yeah, I went and confronted him. And they asked Campbell about it. No, he sent his security guy in to yell at me. And I just laughed in his face and like, <laughs> and waited for him to leave. It's like, so this guy deals with gang members with guns every day, he don't give a fuck. But it's just the idea that Drake made this very public threat of like, yeah, I'll fuck him up if I see him. And then the most he was asked to back it up, just hid behind his security guard and sat in his car on his phone, presumably texting underage girls. Yeah, of course, oh. I'm, gonna mention, I'm gonna mention that one. There's people in the comments right now wondering why we didn't mention it. And people thinking, oh, Carl, you're gonna get done for libel. No. Drake texted Millie Bobby Brown when she's like 15 years old. Oh, so wrong. Saying that he misses her and wants to talk to her more. And he also did it to Billie Eilish too. Yeah. yeah I, what is it with people? I think Nisha's face says it all when I said that. So even if there's a completely innocent explanation for why he's texting like, you know, Millie Bobby Brown, a 15 year old girl and saying, I miss you. Just Nisha's was like the, why or maybe you, you should have gone in and beaten up that tattooist. So it would have been like, you know, a more interesting story and I wouldn't have brought that up instead. <laughs> Oh man, just continue sucking ass forever, Drake. I think the best thing to come from Drake is probably the Hotline Bling meme. Yeah, the song itself, I hate that song. I find it stuck in my head this whole video. Because, like, you know, it was on Spotify. Because it, Spotify kept pushing the shit out of it. And then as well, when I went home, See my mum. My mum likes to leave the radio on all day. And if there's one thing the radio likes to do, it's just play whatever song is currently in the charts over and over again. Yeah. Which is how I ended up just greatly disliking Ed Sheeran, who is apparently a lovely dude in real life, but I just started to dislike him because I'd go home when one of his new albums came out and it was just his entire album would be in the charts, so play it from front to back 10 times a day as I'm trying to work. <laughs> I do like Ed Sheeran. There's the odd song that I've heard too many times, but I like him, you know, as an artist and some oh, yeah. songs, so yeah. I still remember when he was in Game of Thrones oh, yeah. and my uh, housemate didn't watch Game of Thrones. Like, he was aware of it. Uh, my housemate walked in as that episode was airing at the moment Ed Sheeran, like, you know, appeared on screen. I should point out for context, my old housemate was in a band yeah. and he just heard the music and went, that's an Ed Sheeran song. Like he recognised it immediately, like that's Ed Sheeran like singing. And he turned around and he looked at him and went, fuck off. <laughs> like, I, no, straight to the TV and went, there's no fucking way he's in this. Because I think what brought me out of the episode so quickly is that Ed Sheeran just has like his Ed Sheeran haircut. Like everyone else in that show, like, you know, they have like, they're all gruffed up and like, they look like they've been through hell. Ed Sheeran rocked up with hair gelling. <laughs> It's like uh, so out of place. Uh, in The Witcher, which I think is like the closest parallel we have to Game of Thrones now, with Jaskia, 
Have you watched The Witcher at all? No, but it's on my list. Okay. It's on my list to watch. There's a bard in it who follows like Geralt the Witcher around called Jaskia, and I hate that character for the same reason. Everyone in the show has that fantasy look to them. Like you've got um, Henry Cavill with his big dumb white wig on, and then Jaskia turns up and he's just got a boy band haircut. And it immediately made me hate the character. It's like, that hair gel doesn't exist in this universe. Like, chimeras exist. Hair gel doesn't. That's the, I'll believe that Geralt can go out there and fight the shit out of a giant spider monster. I'm not going to believe that this guy discovered hair gel and no one else uses it.